other leaked video from the World Economic Forum featuring Klaus Schwab's advisors casually discussing their plans to depopulate the planet. According to these two WEF stooges, all religious groups are opposed to the World Economic Forum because religions want more souls and the WEF wants less on the planet. So in the session we just attended here at the Economic Forum, I think there was a sense of relief actually in your frankness. Um, you brought up some issues that, that others are really to trouble. bring up. <laughs> Always. <laughs> All the religious groups are against me because I'm talking about population. They want more souls, I want less on the planet. <laughs> At what point do we stop and say enough? How many times does the World Economic Forum have to declare their sinister intentions before the world stops and listens? Klaus Schwab's right-hand man, Yuval Noah Harari, who has a history of saying the quiet part out loud, recently admitted what many people have long suspected. According to Harari, who is promoting his new book, the big political question of the 21st century is, what do we need so many humans for? And it's not even the first time Yuval Noah Harari has let slip regarding their plans for humanity. He recently declared that the WEF considers the vast majority of the human population to be obsolete, useless and redundant. According to Harari, so-called common people are right to be fearful of a future in which they will be made redundant. The WEF advisor assessed the widespread anxiety among common people as being rooted in a fear of being left behind in a future run by smart people. Such fears are justified according to Harari who spoke on behalf of the elites and confirmed, we just don't need the vast majority of you. If you go back to the middle of the 20th century, and it doesn't matter if you are in the United States with Roosevelt or if you are in Germany with Hitler or if you are in, in, in the USSR with Stalin, and you think about building the future, then your building materials are those millions of people who are working hard in the factories, in the farms, the soldiers in the... You need them. You don't have any kind of future without them. Um, and now fast forward to, to the early 21st century when we just don't need the vast majority of the population. Because? Because uh, the, the future is about developing more and more sophisticated technology, like, again, artificial intelligence, bioengineering. Most people don't contribute anything to that, except perhaps for their data. And whatever people are still doing, which is useful, these technologies increasingly will make redundant and will make it possible to, to replace the, the people. Harari's comments are deeply disturbing because when they are placed in context with comments by other WEF advisors and affiliates like Bill Gates, it becomes clear that they have disablement and depopulation on their mind. And the UN is working hand in glove with the WEF. Here is Christiana Figueres letting the cat out of the bag about the plans of the elite. Isn't it true that stopping the rise in population would be one of the biggest levers in driving the rise in greenhouse gases? Is that well, I, I mean, we all know we expect nine billion, right, by by twenty fifty. Um, so yes, obviously, less people would exert less. Um, pressure on the natural resources, and um, and, and that's it's so. Is nine bad. billion a foregone conclusion? That's like baked in, done. Not gonna, no way to change that. Well, there again, there's pressure in the system um, to go toward that. We we can definitely change those, right? We can definitely change those numbers, um, and we really should make every effort to change the numbers because we are already today already exceeding the planetary car carrying capacity today. Alan Gregg, an official founder for the Rockefeller Foundation, said the world has cancer and the cancer is man. Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth's husband, said if he could be reincarnated, he would wish to return to Earth as a killer virus to lower human population levels. A nice guy, that Philip. Jacques Cousteau said we need to eliminate 350,000 people a day. Media mogul Ted Turner said we need a 95% decline in population. I want to start off by saying Brakatha Yahawo, Brakatha Yaharashai, Brakatha Yahawo, Brakatha Yaharashai, Kohala Yahawo by Shim Yahashai, Kohala Yahawo by Shim Yahashai, by Shim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Muslim that told me this doctrine in truth and sincerity. 
Shalom to elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means He is or He exists. Bashem in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world England calls Jesus Christ. We know His name to be Yahweh Shai, which means He is the deliverer. He is the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. Bashem in the name of the Rukak Wadash, which means the Holy Spirit that's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. For so called Negro, so called Latino, so called Native American, or other speckled bird looking like the other nations, and your spirit bear witness with our spirit. That yeah, we are the children of Yahab Hashemar Ashai. You could be one elect. Shalom. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off falling after false gods and false idols. Not following the law, such commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we were sent into captivity. But through Yahab Ashai Hamashiach being the perfect sacrifice in the flesh, he's been given all power to sit on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father to be able to open the seals of the book to be able to ransom his elect. Because of the Hebrew Israelites. Uh, there is an elect, there is a remnant um, that would come back to the Lord before the said destruction would happen. Okay, and what you're seeing is our oppressor Esau, Edom, and these other heathen nations, which Esau means wasted away he is, and they are the biblical Edomites that would have the fatness of the earth, with which would be the resources, and would control it with the great sword. And with that great sword comes, um, you know, their, their military. Um, the military force, you know, comes their different pestilences that they put out, the barium, aluminum in the air, um, the different beetle juices, different hot sauces that they put out there, um, you know, the different uh, philosophies that they push, you know, man on man, woman on woman, transformers, which creates a, a desolate place, creates a, a barren, a barren um, life. Okay, and that's what they want to do is what depopulate the earth because their mindset is to what bring in their Novos Order Sequorium, their New World Order, which is on the back of their dollar bill to have everyone um, under their lock, a, a one world government, a one world a military, a one world religion. And that religion is going to be you having that device under your skin, under your forehead or under your hand. That's their ultimate uh, uh, goal is that karagma, that mark. Um, that they want to put under your skin so they can be able to control your every uh, movement, your every um, uh, thing that you do as far as your your um, carbon footprint. You know, how many times you use the bathroom, where you go, you will be tracked by what a social credit system. OK, which w means that, um, you know, who you're talking to, what you're saying, if you're coming up against these uh, U.N. members or these W.E.F. members or these different uh, stakeholders and these W.E.F. meetings. Um, you will be what enemy of the state. That's why they have the camp set up as far as the FEMA camps over 800 of them And that's why they have all uh, their legislation that they've been passing, you know behind closed doors as Far as they're, um, you know taking away the fourth amendment right as far as if you're in a hundred miles of the border They can be able to legally come in and execute you. That's why uh, Biden has passed with the 14067 executive order far as uh, taking away the cashless society, taking away the cash, Slocky, taking away the cash and bringing in the digital currency, which is going to be controlled by a central banking digital currency, which will be governed by a blockchain, which is these elites that you see right here. And as you see, they laugh and they joke about uh, their, you know, them, them killing people. OK, and this is who we're dealing with. We're not dealing with, you know, everyday uh, uh, people. These people really want to eliminate people because they have, again, a God complex just like Esau Edom. Right, these different what heathen nations. So I'm gonna kind of uh, go in the spirit, you know, far as on this one. Um, you know, I just saw this yesterday, and so you have Klaus Schwab. Let me actually get the, let's get a little bit of the article. So this was on News Punch. What was it? I think it was yesterday. It says evil WEF leader caught planning mass extinction event to inner circle. Okay, so we already know what they did with the um, the whole Beetlejuice a couple years ago, and they're going to start implementing that again because all those people that uh, bow down to they went down to the Egyptian for help. Now all those people have what the uh, the monkey business now, and plus they're going to start turning up these five G and these six G towers. Plus, also they have um, these different plots that they have. You have uh, Operation Garden Plot. You have Operation Gotham Shield. You have Rex eighty four. OK, you have uh, Operation Cable Slicer, you have Operation Mockingbird, right? And all these are set up ultimately to come after the men of the Lord, OK, to uh, box Jake in in a corner. But the Lord, Yahabashim Shai is going to protect his elect. 
Okay. Meanwhile, two thirds of our people got to get sacrificed on this side because they won't hearken to this word. They won't hearken back to the truth. Because again, this is not uh, uh, easy thing. You know, um, basically, basically the Lord, uh, you know, giving you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that will give you stability in this time. But but the the whole world is against that because they're anti. Let me, let me just get a couple of scriptures real quick. This is uh, 1 John 2 and 18. 1 John 2 and 18. Yeah, so this is, says warning about anti-Hamashiachs because, again, there's many anti-Hamashiachs. Anybody that despises this word is anti uh, the scriptures. Okay? So 1 John 2 and 18. Little children, is it his last time, as I have heard, that an anti-Hamashiach shall come? Even now are there many anti-Hamashiachs whereby we know... That it is the last time. So we know this is the last time because uh, the wickedness has reached up to the heavens. Far as the all uh, the abominations, far as the technologies that's here, far as them, you know, glorifying in their science. Okay, far as their their different technologies, because that's when the Lord's going to intervene for His elect, the hour of temptation when they're going to implement that karagma. Okay. So there's many anti Hamashiachs, and so the Lord's what coming to visit this place. Those that have that pr proud spirit, because he's just boasting. That's just one of them. They're boasting about them knocking off millions of people. Okay. And actually, because there's about 8.8 .8 billion people right now. Okay. But they're knocking people off what left and right with their different pestilences, different barium, aluminum, their GMO foods, their fluoride in the water. Right. Isaiah 13, 11, I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to seize and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So Yahabah Shemar Shai is going to lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Because how he's doing that is by giving the secrets to his servants, the prophets, to be able to spread this word. And this word is what? Hewning this place and cutting it down asunder. Okay? Cutting down their plans. That's why they have where the WEF has came out with a board where they want to um, combat the word. As far as this word coming out, if you speak against it, um, you will be called an extremist or a radicalist. And that's why they, they come out with these boards and they'll say black, you know, the black Hebrew Israelites, which black and white is system, but the false social construct that, that Esau, which is the white man, came up with, you know, the, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the so-called white men of today has came up with so he can be able to act like he's actually superior when he's nothing but a peasant. Okay, Hosea 6 and 5, therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and their judgments are as light that goeth forth. So these words that Yahabah Shema Shai has given his servants, the prophets, are hewning this place. It's cutting it down. Let's get it. Jeremiah 1 and 10. Jeremiah 1 and 10, it says, see, I have this day set thee over the name. Let me start from, uh, let's see about... Yeah, let me start at 9. Jeremiah 1 and 9, it says that then the Lord, Yahweh, put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahweh said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Okay, so Yahweh Shema Shai is the one that actually gives us the words to be able to speak. It's a man's goings or not of his, uh, you know, own ways, roughly paraphrasing that. Um, you know, Yahweh Shema Shai has sent forth his, you know, the hopeful elect to be able to um, uh, put forth his, his word. To ultimately to bring bring forth the judgment and to have Yaharashai, Yaharashai be glorified in his splendor, because that's how the Lord uh, speaks is through what his prophets. Jeremiah one and ten. See, I have set these. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down and to build and to plant. Okay, so how do you root out something? First of all, you you have to expose it. You have to find out what the actual cancer is. Okay. Which is what Esau Edom, which is the white man of today, and the way that the society thinks, it, everything is um, um, is anti Hamashiach. Everything is against the Lord, okay, and has reached the heavens. And now the Lord is what sent forth His judgments are as light that goeth forth. And Esau Edom is getting pulled down from his lofty estate, and from the cleft of the rocks, getting pulled down to to who he actually is, which is his inheritance will be what worm and dung, okay, and to destroy. And ultimately, that will be what. The hypersonic missiles, but first it starts with the their inner, um, you know, their their uh, stocks, you know, their um, their military, 
their um their economy being broken down their cash cow being brought down because the elite's cash cow is uh, babylon the great okay and babylon the great that it speaks about in the scriptures is actually america and babylon means confusion america means bitter and again we're in a confusing state when you have um you know pedo joe a known uh, uh toucher of of, of of you know little kids and he's sitting right up there and, and fumbling on every word but he's able to be one of the leaders of the world, okay? And and then what is he pushing forth? He's put the, pushing forth with nothing but abominations, saying that your children can be taught by uh, transformers, um, that um, you know your your child can change his rod. Okay, these are the these are the things that have been going on, and if it keeps going, there shall be what no flesh to be saved, okay? And to throw down, and ultimately that will be um, Esau Edom's inheritance, okay? And to build the tabernacle of David is being built. It starts off with that seed, okay, that seed that the Lord is watering with this with this word that's able to what uh, plant forth his, his his garden. That it speaks about in uh, Psalms of Solomon, okay, his best garden, and that's what his, um, the elect, which is the remnant. And we're praying that we're of that number by uh, pu pushing forth this word, okay. So the Lord has set us up what, over the nations because the reason why I brought that out is that this guy, Nor, uh, you all, Nor, Nora Herrera, he believes that he's one of the smartest people, okay, that in the world, but he's actually, his his wisdom is not wisdom at all. It's ultimately wisdom for his judgment, okay? This is uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 19. This is 1 Corinthians 1 and 19. We'll start from... Yeah, well, actually, we're going to skip around a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to start at 18, and then I'm going to... So, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. Yeah, the wisdom of Yahweh. For preaching of the cross is to the perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of Yahweh. So, let's read this at NLT. It says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction. And that's Esau Edom. He's headed for destruction. Okay, he's ultimately... His words that he's speaking ultimately are bringing forth let's get that proverbs 18 proverbs 18 and 21 death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof so that's going to be ultimately their destruction okay because what every idle word is going to be counted in the day of judgment and they that are what exalt themselves let me get it matthews 23 and I believe it's in here Bear with me. Yep, right here. It says, Matthew 23 and 12. And whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Okay, so the humble is the one that's going to be able to inherit the kingdom. Okay, we inherit the blessing. The Lord's not coming back for the proud. He actually hates people that are proud, coming with that proud spirit. Okay, because again, in this thing, um, when Yahweh Shem HaShad brings into you, you have to be humbled all the way down because you know that you didn't follow the law such commandments. We didn't follow the law such commandments. We weren't doing the right thing. We were out in the world, uh, basically, you know, being worldly. Okay, but the Lord is is raised is doing a great work for us, bringing us back to uh, our, our true inheritance. You know, raising up uh, kings and priests. You know, to be a royal priesthood. Right. So let's go back to it. This is First uh, Corinthians. Yep. 19 for it is written i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and i will bring nothing to the understanding of the prudent okay in the scriptures i say i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent okay so the ones that you've all know Rary thinks he's going to trust in his science okay that science is ultimately going to be uh um, it's going to be that hypersonic missile from that splitting of that atom outside his head if he's not of the elite okay as far as the v in those bunkers of uh, you know Esau Edom, then he's gonna get caught up in, in um, all of the destruction, okay. But either way, he's gonna be what um, one of those first one of those uh, those crops of slaves, okay. It says First Corinthians one and twenty. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the wor of this world? Hath not Yahweh made the foolish the wisdom of the world, okay? And that's what the Lord has made. He made the foolishness of this world because the most 
proud thing, the most vilest man is exalted. Let's get that. That's Psalms 12 and 8. Psalms 12 and 8, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Okay, so the most vilest men are praised. You've all known Herrera's praise, Paul Schwab is praised, Bill Gates is praised. Okay, Pedal Joe is still praised, even though they make fun of him, but they see him as the president. He's able to walk around, you know, eating the best of foods, okay, traveling on jets, you know, flying around. Okay, able to uh, he's not a, he's not in trouble like other men. Okay. And these are what the basis of men. Job. 30 and 10 I think it's 8 Job 30 and 8 it says they were children children of fools yeah children of base men they were viler than the earth so they were the most vilest vilest of the earth that the Habashim HaShah raised up on the left hand side ultimately so uh, the men of the Lord can be able to um, see what wickedness is and come back to righteousness okay to be what omnipotent like our Lord to be those judges let's just get another one first Samuel uh, 2 and 7. 1 Samuel 2 and 7. The Lord Yahweh maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. So again, the basis of men, um, you know, when they were put down for that thousand year period over there in the uh, Russia, Georgia, Caucasus Mountains. Okay, they were over there, what, eating juniper roots and wearing their underwear to a rod at all, speaking like cavemen. But how about Shema Shai is put them in order. Far as for them to, to rule the world, and what do they do? They they rule it in what taking peace from the earth, okay? Ultimately destroying destroying um all of Babylon and what the file in the earth, okay? Because the Lord said that we shall inhabit the earth. Far as this this place is meant to be forever, it's not meant um to be destroyed. <laughs> far as far as how they think they think that there's only supposed to be um a certain amount of people when it speaks about that in Isaiah just to. 45 and 18 Isaiah 45 and 18 for thus said Yahweh created the heavens and Yahweh himself that formed the earth and made it he had established it he created it not in vain he formed it to be inhabited I am Yahweh and there is none else so he informed it to be inhabited okay he didn't he didn't inform it to be um let's see what is that 24 yeah 24 and about 7 I think it's Maybe 25. Yeah, he didn't form it to be yeah, Isaiah 24 and 5. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broke the everlasting covenant. So when them when they're trying to cover up the sun, okay, which or they're trying to cover up the moon, which ultimately goes back to Jeremiah 31 and about 35, where it's speaking about if they can be able to cover the sun and the on uh, the moon, basically the heavenly father was telling Esau, if you're able to cover up those, um, the moon and the sun, you know, for the heathen, then they would, then he would take away the promise that he gave to Jacob, which is ultimately immortality and salvation. Okay. And that was, that was just, um, how about Shema Shai, um, you know, um, ultimately <laughs> put in uh, Esau, eat him in a, in a trick bag. Okay. Cause you, you're not going to be able to do that, but that's why they do that certain thing. And they believe that they can be able to exterminate the whole earth. Okay, and real quick, Revelation 6 and 4, because they were created to do this. They were given that great sword, Revelation 6 and 4, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat therein to take peace from the earth, and they that should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So that's ultimately what they're doing as far as uh, cutting off the food supply, uh, saying you will own nothing and be happy. Okay, they're taking peace from the earth. And they ultimately want you to, to bow down to, to their beast system, which is ultimately their device. Okay? And when it speaks about the horse right there, that's the power that Esau Edom has been given on the left-hand side far as with that great sword. And that red goes back to Edom, which goes back to the Greek word idumia, which goes back to uh, Cain being cursed with leprosy. Going back to the evidence of who he actually is, which is actually a, a red man. Okay? Going back to his pigmentation, he has a lack of pigmentation. He doesn't have a melatonin, okay? And going back to that, what, that great sword that he's been given, that's how he's able to, what, control the earth, okay? Control the world with that great sword, with manipulation, um, deception, okay, lies. It says, Genesis 27 and 40, And by the sword thou shalt live and serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou have dominion. 
thou shalt break his yoke off thy neck. So they that um, served that brother, they were serving King David. Okay, then they were what? Loosened for a little season, then they were what, put down. And then they came about what the mid 1300s, what to deceive the nations. And they started with a Ponoclasm, with the uh, Serapis Christi, uh, Caesar Borgir. Okay, and now you see what Jesus Christ, which is that pale faced homosexual a hippie image when that's not how our Lord looks. He's actually a so-called black man of today with the with the afro. Okay, but they put that depiction because they couldn't have um you know um you know the image of of a of a brown skinned man uh you know <laughs> far as in their kingdom. So they, they put forth that pale image to 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 try to act like they are actually the people. Okay. Showing you that that's not wisdom at all because the true wisdom is in these scriptures, okay? So going back to 1 and 19, 1 Corinthians 1, and we'll start at, we'll go to 20. Yeah, we'll go to uh, 21. 1 Corinthians 1 and 21, for after that, in the wisdom of Yahweh, the world by wisdom knew not Yahweh, it pleased Yahweh by foolishness of preaching to save them that believe, okay? So by preaching this word, uh, this world thinks is foolishness. You know, they mock and they scoff. They what misuse the prophets. Um, you know, that's just, that's a white man's book. Okay. Um, you know, we're not the people, um, you know, and ultimately our people have what Stockholm syndrome. Okay. But the preaching of this word to standing out there on the highways and the byways, uh, making your bodies a living sacrifice. That's a reasonable service to the heavenly father. And ultimately what being transformed. Let me just get a scripture for that. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by mercies of Yahweh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto our power, which is a reasonable service. So it's a reasonable service to make your body a living sacrifice, far as uh, putting forth these epistles, you know, being on the highways and the byways, sacrificing the things of this world to, to the, ultimately to be able to have immortality and salvation. And the Lord is not going to forget uh, uh, your works. Let's get that. Hebrews 6 and 10, for Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that you that it may be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So the promises, immortality and salvation that the Lord would, would give us, give us everything because we actually have, um, let me just get it. This is uh, 2 Corinthians. And the point of me bringing out these scriptures is because these devils, they believe that they have wisdom. They believe they trust in their science, but that wisdom at all, that wisdom is not wisdom at all. Okay, it's actually foolishness as we already read. Okay, this is 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have, we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. Okay, because our true power is with Yahabah Shemel Rashai. Okay, that's our true weapon. That's our true sword. Okay, our sword is not uh, picking, uh, picking up arms and bearing up arms. It's trusting in the Lord. Okay, because look at what it says right here. It's 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Okay, so now you have these, these um, heathen nations, these different heathen nations, these stockholders and these WEF meetings, and different groups that are what saying they they want to eliminate people and we have them where they're being exposed for for them putting that beetle juice out we have them saying that they want to put out these mosquitoes we have these different elites that are openly speaking about killing masses of people and everyone's just in, in la la land everyone's just chilling okay so even though we're perplexed they're cutting off the food supply they're cutting off the water okay they're they're, they're saying you know if you're speaking against the government we're going to lock you up Okay, we're not in despair. Okay, because the Lord is with us what always. Okay, what is that? About Matthew's twenty-eight and about twenty. Second Corinthians four and nine. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down but not not destroyed. So it is a blessing to be what persecuted for this truth. Okay. He that is persecuted. Let me let me get a scripture. This is uh, Matthew's. Five and about twelve. Matthews 5 in, yep. Matthews 5 and 10. Blessed are, 
And this is uh, Yahweh in Red Letter, Matthew 5 and 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye men which shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say in a manner of evil against you, you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they that the prophets which have before you. Okay? So again, going into um, the prophets, the prophets, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the spirits of the prophets. Okay? That they would come back. Was that Daniel's 12 and 13? That they would come back. That Daniel will come back in us a lot. Okay? So he's either here or he's just in the spirit world, but he was here in this in this uh, era. Okay? In this time. And it's a blessing and will be persecuted for the truth. Why? Because Matthew 5 and 13, you are the salt of the earth. It says, but if the salt have lost its savior, wherewith you shall be salted, it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. And that hill goes into what? A government. Okay. Um, that, that's what was set on, set on a hill. Right. Mount Zion. Okay. That light is what? The truth. Okay. And that light is shining through what? The elect that are crying and sighing for all the abominations declaring um, who our Lord is. Right. 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but under a candlestick, and it is given light unto all that is in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they should see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Okay, so you have to let your light shine before men. That goes into, um, you know, being on the highways and the byways, um, you know, letting the people see your face, but also being on these epistles and crying and sighing and let your, let your tears show, because this is actually true tears. Okay far as, um, you know, we're crying out to the Lord to what? Seek vengeance on our enemies, which he's going to do. And righteousness, okay? 2 Corinthians 4 and 9. Persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. We are, we're not destroyed. We're still, st we're standing upon our feet. Um, and it speaks about it in Ezekiel 37, we were standing upon our feet, okay? And that what, in Revelation 11, it says these, what, these other nations will be in fear, okay? Because they see, um, or they know the true power that, that we once had, but the Lord put us at a low estate because we didn't follow the law such a commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. Okay? It says, 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, for which we cause, it says, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So this is all about working on the on the inner man. It's not about your, your outer appearance as far as you got the best car, you know, you got the best job. You got the, you know, your flyest woman. This is about working on the inner man and changing that inner man. You know, being transformed and renewed in your mind and whatever that you're that you're lacking in, or that the Lord is is, is testing you on. Um, you got to endure. You got to endure hardness like a good soldier. Because again, this is not this is not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Okay. It says uh, was Acts fourteen and twenty two. Through much tribulation, we shall enter into the kingdom. Okay, so, and then also what Matthew's uh, 7 and 14, we have to enter down that straight gate, which is a position of difficulty. Okay, so you might be perplexed from your woman, your job, uh, it might be infirmities, you know, impurities, it might be things that have, you know, that you, that have been put off, um, you know, in the past, but, you, but you're still fighting uh, uh, through those things, and the Lord loves what a good fighter. Okay, he doesn't want someone that's just going to give up because, because you got knocked down. Because it speaks about that in, a, um, what is it, a righteous man falls seven times. I think that's uh, Job. Let me just get that real quick. Job 24. It's going to be Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24 and might be seven. Actually, this, yep, let's, let's read this. This is Proverbs 24 and 1. Be not, envy, be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, for their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. And that's what these uh, these uh, heathen nations are doing, starting with Esau, Edom, okay? Because they have, what, a crafty counsel to come against uh, the men of the Lord, okay? Good is said against evil, and they're both obedient to the Heavenly Father, as it speaks about in, in um, the Apographer. Proverbs 24 and 3, the wisdom is a house of builded and by understanding it is established and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all the precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yet a man of knowledge increases strength. 
Okay, so this wisdom increases your strength. So no matter what you're going through, um, if you keep fighting, you know, <laughs> the good fight of faith, okay, the Lord is going to what? Be able to, to help those that seek him early, those that are seeking on him, those that are not uh, trusting on their own or their own wits or their own lust. But trusting in the Lord, even if you get, even if what you're getting knocked down, you know, you're getting hit on left and right. Okay. But it's all about what the, um, he that endured to the end shall be saved. Okay. Proverbs 24 and six for by a wise counsel, thou shalt make the war and the multitude of counselors. There is safety. So don't go to war without a wise guidance. Victory depends on having many advisors that goes into that wise counsel. Okay. And, and the true men of the Lord, cause you, what you're seeing is a lot of camps out there that are, are basically, you know, they're trusting in the worldly uh, doctrine. They're trusting in most high Christ bless. They're trusting in their weapons. You know, they're trusting in a woman instead of actually just trusting in the Lord and following uh, the lamb wherever he goes. And the lamb wherever that he goes is going to be the doctrine. It's going to be the true doctrine. It's not going to have the antics. It's not going to be worldly. Okay. And the victory is in your It's not in, it's not in, um, you know, in this world, okay, the victory is in Yahweh Shai, and he has victory over death, right? Proverbs 24 and 7, wisdom is too high for a fool. He opened not his mouth in the gate. Yeah, wisdom is too lofty for fools among leaders of the city gate, and they have nothing to say. Yeah, so wisdom is too lofty, and that's a fool when someone's saying that, that um, you know, to, to kill that brother, to go out there and just exterminate everybody, okay? <laughs> that, that's too high for a fool, because of what are they trying to do? They're trying to exterminate the men of the Lord. Okay, coming against these scriptures saying that they're, that they're the smartest in the world. But then meanwhile, they're saying there's no Messiah. Okay, and it speaks about that in, um, what is that, Psalms 14? Psalms 14 and 1, it says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have dumb and abominable what works. There is none that doeth good. So again, this guy knew you've all know Herrera and also called Schwab. What are they engaging? Man on man, woman on woman, transformers coming against the Lord, saying if there's gonna be a, a savior, it's gonna be out of Silicon Valley, trusting in their science. Okay, they're not trusting in the Lord. Right? That's why it says a fool had said in his heart. Where is that? Yeah, right here. Read this in the NLT. Proverbs 24 and 7. Wisdom is too lofty for fools. Among leaders at the city gate, they have nothing to say. A person who plans evil will get a reputation as a troublemaker. The schemes of a fool are sinful. Everyone detests a mocker. If you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. Rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to death. Save them as a stagger to their death. Don't excuse yourself by saying, look, uh, we didn't know. For Yahweh understands all hearts and he sees you. He guards your souls, knows you, knows you knew. He will repay all your people and the accusations deserve. So again, all this work is not unvain. It's not going, the Lord is not unrighteous to forget your works in vain. That's why it's important to what? Be diligent. So even if you're getting knocked down, the Lord is still with us. Because as you see, um, this devil is hurt. Okay, so I want to get to this actual point. This is Proverbs uh, 24, and this is this is the point right here. Because their wisdom is not wisdom at all. It's ultimately for the judgment. It speaks about that, and that's the point I was trying to bring, you know, bringing out through uh, the scriptures. Because this guy is a, is a fool. Because he doesn't trust in the Lord. This is uh, real, real quick, Sirach. 19 and 23 Sirach 19 and 23 yep 22 the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudence yep because these um these elites okay these you've all know herreras which they're just nothing but um cult of personalities but they actually believe that they're going to win and the lord is what given them what um the deceiver and the deceiver are his Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 16. But the ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. For when they had thought it to have their friend, they consumed to not and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. Yeah, they made a covenant with death. Okay, ultimately to be uh, destroyed. Meanwhile, the men of the Lord on the right hand side are making a, uh, you know, making a covenant with Yahweh Shemar as far as what trusting in the Lord. 
even though we might we might fall on 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 hard times, right? Proverbs twenty four and sixteen for a just man falls seven times. That seven times goes into what a complete number of times, okay? And rise up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Yeah, so the the wicked is gonna fall into um, disaster. It has enough. Uh, Sakim, the wit, the wiz, Sakim, the wicked is gonna fall into their mischief, okay? Because of what they trusted in the oppression, they're trusting in making a covenant with with this world instead of making a covenant with Yahweh Shemashai, and trusting that He would be able to what save us, right? Second Corinthians one, Sakim four and ten. Second Corinthians 4 and just to finish that out, 2 Corinthians 4 and 16. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is, re is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us far more exceedingly in external weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Okay? The kingdom is eternal. Meanwhile, Esau Edom kingdom is but what for a short time. This is Psalms two and one. Actually, Slocky, let me let me finish that out. First Corinthians one and twenty. Yeah, bringing out the point that their wisdom is not wisdom at all. This is foolishness, right? First Corinthians one and twenty one. For after in the wisdom of Yahweh, the world by wisdom knew it not. Yahweh, it pleased Yahweh by foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Saki, I read that. It's yeah, right here, 27. Saki. First Corinthians 1 and 27. But Yahweh had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and Yahweh had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things are despised had Yahweh chosen, yet the things which are not to bring to naught things are that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him ye and Hamashiach, which of Yahweh is made unto us in wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Okay? And true redemption is having our Lord what be able to save us in those in those um those you the world Adrian calls them UFOs, but they're actually the chariots of the Lord to be able to be saved out of the said uh, perils that are about to happen. Because what you're seeing is them gearing up for war. This is Psalms 2 and 1. Why did he the rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The things of the earth set themselves and that, that vain thing uh, goes into... Um, well, the, he the heathen raging goes into them trying to implement their new world order. Them, you know, depopulating the earth, their Georgia Guidestones, and ultimately trying to bring in their new world order, a one world religion, a one world government, right? That's their that's their vain thing. And they're causing a commotion by uh, saying things or certain things are what extremists, when they're actually just, the, nothing's extremist, it's just straight out the Bible, okay? Condemn it. And ultimately, this word condemns Esau Edom, and it puts them, uh, uh, you know, where he's been exposed, he's being made bare. Psalms 2 and 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away the cords from us. So these kings of the earth going into, um, you know, Yuval Noah Herrera, uh, Karl Schwab, and also that the other guy right there, let me see what his name was. One of the advisors from the WEF, because what they have done is they, they're in the W. They're they're in a, um. They're called stakeholders, which they invested money in those different uh, pestilences and things like that. Let's see. Yeah, so they don't have his name. Let's see. So Al Alan Gregg, an official for Rockefeller Foundation, said the world has cancer and the cancer is a man. Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth's husband, said if he could be reincarnated, he would. Okay, so. Yeah, so I can't find the, the one guy's name. But anyway, he's part of the, what the WEF. Okay. Yeah, that guy right there on the left. All right, cut. 
But we get the point. As far as those leaders, they're the ones that are what consulting together to what uh, uh, come together what by using what their resources and their funds. This is Psalms two and one. Psalms 2 and 3, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Okay, that goes into dividing the people, you know, calling us black, calling us white, um, you know, calling us black Hebrews, you know, Latino Hebrews when we're not. We're actually what Hebrew Israelites. Okay, and those are what those trying to break us apart, you know, by frustrating, you know, the, the thing that's going on with uh, Kanye West. Okay, that's a lot. That's a part of it is what are they doing? Basically saying that Kanye West is crazy, even though he's. He's, he's actually nothing but a pawn. He's saying certain points that actually make sense. But because of his past, now it looks crazy because he's not saying the whole truth. You got to say the whole truth when you come out with this word, right? Psalms 2 and 4, he sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, and Yahweh Shai shall have him in derision. Okay, and that's what the Lord does. He That's what he's doing right now. He has him in derision. Okay, but they still are going to keep pushing um, as far as their mischief, as far as their wickedness. Let's get the scripture. This is Psalms. 21 and 11 Psalms 21 11 for they intended evil against thee they imagine a mischief device which they have not able to perform so that mischief device is ultimately um, that karagma that graven image in your forehead or in your hand okay that they're trying to plot and they're coming against what the men of the Lord this is Psalms 83 and 2 Psalms 83 and 2 for lo thy enemies make atonement and they hate thee that have lifted up thy head let me, uh, yep, three. It says they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and a consult against thy hidden ones, okay? So this crafty counsel goes into what, hiding who hiding who we are, you know, calling us black, calling us a uh, Puerto Rican, calling us a uh, uh, Mexican, calling us um, Puerto Rican and Dominican. All these things are what, by words, okay? By words, by, by words and proverbs that the Lord said that we would have if we didn't. If we didn't follow the law, said your commandments. And the hidden ones are the Hebrew Israelites. For they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. Okay? And that's what they're trying to do uh, when they came out with that Beetlejuice. Okay? They cut off a lot of people from what? Actually, their, their DNA. Okay? As far as who they actually are. Okay? Now you're seeing them bug out doing the Justin Bieber, doing the Harlem Shake. Okay, and ultimately they're trying to what have that device that goes into you that will take away your VMAT two and your God gene. Okay, Psalms eighty three and five, they have t they have consulted, they have consulted together with one consent. They have confederated against thee. It says the tabernacles of Edom. So Edom goes back to what you saw. Edom, okay, goes back to what uh, the white man of today, right? The elites, the banksters, right? The Ishmaelites. Okay, so you have the Ishmaelites that are over there. And what, uh, you know, over there in Iran, okay? And what are they doing now? They're, they're, Saudi Arabia is going with Russia, okay? But they still have consulted against what the hidden ones. You know, you have Moab, which are what, the, the Chinese? And what are they doing? They're doing the same thing. They're locking people up in these different camps. They already have a form of what, the social credit system. And what, that the Hagarines, which goes into the, um, which goes into what, the I think the Philistines, okay? And... It's going down, it says, Jeroboam, Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyree, right? So all these different nations are consulting against what the hidden ones far as to come up against them and create a siege on the people, okay? Ultimately destroying the actual people that are inside and coming after what the men of the Lord, okay? I just let, let me check on something real quick. It says Okay, Salakian. So yeah, the Hagarines are actually the, the Arabs too. Then you have what Jebel and Ammon. So Jebel, they are what the Hamites, and then Ammon is the Japanese. Amalek, which is the head tribe of Esau Edom, that's gonna be what blotted out. Then you have what the, the Philistines, which are what the Africans, inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Salah. So all these different nations have consulted together to hide the, the hidden ones, okay? Which goes into, let's start from one. Psalm 64 and one, 
Hear my voice, O Yahweh, in my prayer. Preserve me from the life, from the fear of my enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked for the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Okay? Yep, and that's what they're doing through what the different legislation. And you've seen their, their proud spirit where they're boasting and bragging about uh, knocking off millions of people. Okay? This is four. They that men shoot in secret at the perfect, suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. So again, who are they shooting at in secret? The elect. Okay, the prophets. That's who they're, that's who they're trying to um, contradict far as with the truth. But they can't do nothing against the truth but for the truth. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares and privily they say, who shall see them? Okay, the men of the Lord see um, what you're doing and Yahab Shai sees you. Because what his eyes are in every his eyes are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Proverbs fifteen and three: the eyes of Yahweh are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Okay, because Yahweh Shemashah is the one that's in control of the whole movie. Good and evil. Isaiah forty five and seven: I form the light, which is the truth. I create darkness, which is Esau Edom. I make peace, which is Yahweh Shai. Okay. And create evil, I, Yahweh, do all these things. So Yahweh Shema Shai does all the things, ultimately bringing in what? The spirit of prophecy. So all these things have to happen as far as them killing masses of people. Because again, Yahweh Shema Shai is coming to visit what? Those in the third, fourth generation that don't want to hearken to the truth. Psalm 64 and 5, they encourage themselves in the evil matter. They commune of laying snares. Privately, they say, who shall see them? They search out their iniquities, they accomplish a diligent search, both their inward thought of every one of them, and their heart is deep. Okay, their heart is deep on how many people they want to destroy. Okay, and they have consulted together again with these different nations to, to implement this worldwide agenda, ultimately to what? Come down on the people. Okay, but also Yahabba Shema Shai has created where um, the elect is not going to bow down to the image of Baal, Romans 11 and 4. Yep, and so let me get this. It says seven, but Yahweh shall shoot at them, which the arrow suddenly they shall be wounded. Okay, this is ultimately going into what those those hypersonic missiles. Okay, that are going to be shooting at them, uh, uh, far as destroying Babylon the Great and other parts of the world. But the whole world is not going to be destroyed. Okay, but Babylon the Great is going to be a wasteland. Psalm sixty four and eight, they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves, and all that see them shall flee away. Okay, and that's what they're doing right now. They're having their own tongue. Uh, uh, fall upon themselves because they're exposing their identity. They're exposing uh, who they actually are, that they are what? The son of perdition. Second Thessalonians 2 and 8, because again, their, their, uh, their playbook is out in the open now. Okay. They're not hiding that the, that they're the small hats They're I mean, they're trying to hide it, but they, but they can't anymore. Now it's what mainstream. Okay. And they're intense far as waging war on the people is right out there in the open. And and a lot of and these other heathen nations are nothing but puppets under the elites. This is two and three. Second Thessalonians two and three, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall come is Sakya. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called Yahweh and that is worshipped, so that it is God that sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, because that's ultimately wants to do. And that temple is actually your body, okay, which is actually your body. They want to implement that device under your skin, okay, because of what he has what a God complex, but the Lord is going to intervene for his elect. Second Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed. Whom Yahavashai shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And that's what's, what you're seeing right now. The brightness of his coming, as um, far as the, pro the prophets are consuming this devil and putting him in a place. But again, only um, the elect, the hopeful elect, is going to be able to have the understanding. Okay, while the rest are going to be blinded by the God of this world, right? And the brightness of his coming is, is Yahavashai coming in what? Those chariots of fire, coming back in his splendor. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, okay? And that word, um, uh, you know, Satan, 
goes back to uh, who Esau and Edom follows, okay, as far as in the flesh, the spiritual demon of Satan on the left-hand side, and, and Esau, Edom in the flesh, uh, follows the spiritual demon of Satan. That's who, that's who they'd be wor worshiping as far as those different meetings, and they, they have different, you know, the Bilderberg meetings, the, the, the WEF meetings, all these are created for what? To um, ultimately, because the, they believe that they're, that Haba Shema Shai is actually working with them when he's not. Ultimately, it's for the destruction, okay? With their signs and the lying wonders, their, their signs falsely so-called, okay? That word lying goes into what a broad sense, not what it seems to be, okay? So it seems like they want to help, but actually what? They're implementing certain debt, okay? Because they're act, they're coming with their what problem, action, solution. And what we're supposed to do is what trust in the Lord and lean out on our own, on you know, own ways, and know that the Lord is going to be with us, well, always, right? Let's get this. This is uh, Psalms. Fifty-nine and one. It says, "Deliver me from my enemies." Oh, my power, Yahweh, defend me from them that rise up against me, okay? And that's what they're doing. They're rising up against uh, the men of the Lord, but also the whole world as far as to, to implement their, their devices that they want. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from that bloody man, okay? And this is a very bloody man. And all these people that are, are um, joined unto him, they have the same mind thoughts. They have the same uh, mindset far as destroy the people um, that are going to be putting them down because again, the elect, <laughs> the brother has a video or a, a page called you know the elect has got next okay Yahushai is next right the King of King Lord of Hosts right but this bloody man has to be what put down and we know that the Lord is going to what let's get this this is Psalms I think it's one forty four and two call out Yahweh Shemir Psalms one forty four it says Yep, and the Lord, Yahweh, my strength, which teach in my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he and him who I trust, who subdue my people under me. Okay, it says seven, send thy hand from above and rid me and deliver me out of the great waters from the hands of strange children. Okay, and these, they're going to be coming in more like a flood, those strange waters, which goes back to the, the multitude that they consulted together. You know, far as you have the whore, which is America, and then you have what the beast system, which is the 10, um, you know, the 10 different uh, nations that they started with. And now it's about uh, 28 to 30 different nations that have consulted to what take away um, your sovereignty to take away all your rights. Right. Ultimately, by force. Psalms 144 and 7, send thy hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of the great waters from the hands of strange children. And these are strange children because they engage in man on man, woman on woman transformers. A strange child is where they want to um, they want to kill people uh, basically on, on the mere fact um, just because they want control. OK, but ultimately that's going to be um, their own destruction is them trying to come after the men of the Lord. Psalms 144 and 8, whose mouth speak of vanity. And their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Yeah, so everything they speak is, is uh, you know, left-handed magic, okay, which is left-handed energy, um, which ultimately leads to uh, death. Psalms 144 and 11, rid me and deliver me from the hands of strange children whose mouth speak in vanity, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Yeah, let me read this in NLT. It says, uh, save me, rescue me from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. And that's what they're doing. Because they'll say they want to help you on one side, but then they want to say they, they want to bring in the fourth industrial revolution. Which the fourth industrial revolution is you not having no job and you not, and you eating bugs and you following after Esau Edom and what he does, which is nothing but abominations to the Lord, which leads to death and destruction, which he's known as um, death and hell, which hell is a condition played out on earth. And but we know that Yahweh Shai has victory over death. Psalms 59 and 2 Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from that bloody man. For lo, they wait and for my soul, the mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression nor for my sin, O Yahweh. They run and prepare themselves without my fault, awake to help, and behold. It says, They that therefore, O Yahweh Shemashai of hosts, that word host goes in the army. It says, Thy power of Israel. 
awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any of the wicked transgressors. Salah. And that's where the men of the Lord are praying that the Lord be not merciful. Okay. And we know, we know the Lord does not change. The Habashim Hashad doesn't change. And he said he would what save his elect. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. Okay. And real quick, I want to get this. Because they're coming on every side. As far as their, their different legislation, their sleeper cells, right? This is Psalm 17. And this is King David. The tabernacle of David is being risen up, okay? And this is the same mindset that King David had, right? And this is the same mindset that we have to have too, right? If we're of those men. Psalm 17 and 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Okay, the apple of his eye is actually the elect. Okay, because the elect are the only ones that are crying and sighing. Those are the, what the first church, the first fruits. And those are our Yahweh Hashem Shai's, right? Everything that's the first is goes back to the, the Heavenly Father, right? Psalm 17 and 9, which is Exodus uh, 13 and 2. Psalm 17 and 9, from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about. And that's what these devils are doing. They're passing us about with their different legislation, their propaganda, um, their different operations that they're doing in the background. Okay, they're passing us about. But again, that's why I read in 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 2 Corinthians 4, that they even though they can pass us about on every side or they distress us, the Lord is with us always, right? Psalm 17 and 10, they enclose in their own fat with their mouth, they speak proudly. And that's what they're doing right there. They're laughing and joking about killing masses of people because he was saying the religion wants to save people, which their religion is actually not religion at all. It's nothing but satanic worship. Okay. Religion just means what to follow. To follow after and what are they following after shaitan which leads to death that's why they were laughing about it and that goes right into that scripture uh you know what they were just doing psalm 17 and 10 they are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth they speak proudly so that word enclosed goes into um you know they're putting themselves in jail <laughs> basically when you go into the actual word the definition it goes into um lock locking down they're locking themselves down for ultimately for their judgments by their by the by their tongue by their pride Psalm 17 and 11, they have, it says, they have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth, like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and then we're a young lion lurking in the secret places. And that's what they're doing. They're lurking in the secret places with these different devices, with their computers, um, you know, with their surveillance. They even, a uh, man's foe shall be of his own household. Okay, so again, and they're seeking to what? Um, seeking to devour what the elect. Okay, but they can't touch the elect. As I'm going to bring out in, uh, what is that, Isaiah 59. It says, Psalm 17 and 13, Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay, because we know that the Heavenly Father is control of that sword, which is what the modern day Assyrian, which is Esau, Edom. Right, but if we're with Yahweh Shema Shai, you know, let, let me get it real quick. This is Psalms, and I'll end it in there. Psalms 124 and 1. It says, if it had not been Yahweh who was on our side, now may Israel say, so the Lord's on uh, the elect side, the hopeful elect. Okay, he's not on Esau, Edom's side. He's ultimately, he's set up to be destroyed. He's a ticking time bomb. This is Psalms 124 and 2. If it had not been Thou Yahweh who was on our side when men rose up against us, it says, they that have swallowed us up quick, and when the wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us, and the stream had gone over our soul. And those waters are um, Esau, Edom, coming in like a flood. Uh, is that Revelation 17 and 1, Revelation 17 and 15? Okay, and they're coming with a great multitude. But the Lord, again, is going to lift up that standard for his elect. Okay, and we're praying that we're of that number. It says, then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be Yahweh who had not given us for a prey to their teeth. And those teeth go into different um, types of teeth. You know, you have, again, the pestilence, the beetle juice. You have the different the foods. Okay, you have the barium, aluminum. You have the actual, uh, the guns, the actual tanks, the ac actual super soldiers. But blessed be that Yahweh who had not given us up for a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Okay, so going into um, that bird, which we would consider the bird, right, out of that snare, which is a trap, and that fowler is Esau Edom, because he is the what the cunning hunter, and he has what, um, you know, has us in the trap and the snare as far as we're in this world, we're in, the, in these bodies, but the Lord is going to intervene for his elect, right? 
the snare is broken. So again, the snare is broken. They're not able to um, be able to trap us like they once were. It says, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, who had made heaven and the earth. Okay, our help is in the name. And that's why it shows you so important that they would have that name, that we would have that name in the latter days, which is in the ancient Hebrew, which is Yahweh, which is the heavenly father, by Hashem in the name, right? And his only begotten son, Yahweh Okay, Bashim Rakakwadash, which is what the Holy Spirit is able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of who we are. Okay, and you say those three, um, because again, those are three entities that are working on one accord ultimately to give us the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we need to what be able to be stable in this time because we're headed in what trying times. This is Isaiah 33 and 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of thy salvation, and the fear of Yahweh is his treasure. So it is a, is a treasure to what fear the Heavenly Father. Because as you see, these heathen nations, even two thirds of our people, don't fear the Heavenly Father. They're not coming back. They're not repenting for their sins. Okay? They're, 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 not, um, they're not coming back to the Lord. Why? Because they ultimately they've been blinded. And read this again Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. What time were we headed in, or what time are we in? A time of war. Okay, a time of uh, great trouble, right? Stability of thy times and thy strength of thy salvation. Our salvation is in Yahweh Shai. And the fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is his treasure. So it is the treasure to fear the Heavenly Father. So with that, call Allah Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakodash, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yashalom.